Isn't this a beautiful machine? Putting aside if you like or don't like RGB, it looks freaking awesome. The orange color of the light wings, mm, the orange cables, mm, I, I love those freaking orange cables. Cable model makes so beautiful cables. I, I think it turns out amazing. Also, there are like a bunch of orange stripes uh, throughout the motherboard, which ah, it, I believe it looks awesome. Yesterday, I finished filming at roughly five o'clock and I had the machine booted up at like 10 o'clock. It was an amazing day. So for this episode, I'm not going to just talk about the benchmarks. We have benchmarks, we have temp tests, we have everything. However, I also want to uh, remind everybody of some practices that you should do when you are building a PC. When I initially pressed the start button, um, nothing happened. Of course, it started, like there was electricity going through things. However, uh, there was a uh, light saying DRAM. And yeah, this usually indicates that there, there is some sort of RAM issue, compatibility, broken RAM, I don't know what. However, I when I installed the cooler and the fans, I hit the RAM pretty hard with the light wings because nothing about this is original and it's not supposed to be like that. However, we did it, you know, tolerances and stuff. Um, so I was afraid I just broke the RAM. Naturally, I took out the RAM, I replaced them with something else. Again, DRAM light. I took them out again, other RAM, DRAM light. And so on and so on for like 20 minutes. At that point, I was starting to get afraid. So uh, I tinkered a bit more and switched out uh, the GPU to the bottom port because PCs like motherboard light indicators are not like a guide it's more like a suggestion it's there sometimes they are right but most of the times they are not at this point I was getting afraid that the motherboard which I bought new which was clearly not new as we found out during unboxing uh, might have been an RMA and they just didn't give a frick and send me a broken board you know somebody sent it back they send it to me without checking and maybe I now have a broken board so I was starting to get afraid about that luckily I took the box and I and I just looked at it and I realized that there was just a sticker saying Ryzen 3000 support so so it made bing in my head that uh, this motherboard was produced and sold before Ryzen 5000 launch, which was the case with X570 motherboards back then. Which means that I need to do a BIOS update. So I took the initiative of removing the Darkrock Pro 4, which was a real hassle because the fan in the center is not in the, like in a nice way, that, that thing is squished. And I didn't want to remove the whole motherboard. Then I took it out and I um, replaced it with a 3900X, which is our usual uh, CPU bench test machine. When I installed the new CPU, I put back my Pinnacle RAM and again, DRAM light. So I was getting really afraid at that point. So I switched it out again for other RAM and other RAM and other RAM. And at what point I decided to just put in one single stick, because uh, that's also what you are supposed to do. And then suddenly, boom, it, it lighted up, which was already a success. So no, the board is not dead. Of course, immediately I had an USB stick ready with a new BIOS. I slapped it in, did that whole Asus thingy for, for BIOS upgrades, and boom, it was working fine. However, with only one stick of RAM. After the BIOS upgrade, I uh, repositioned the 5950X in there, then I booted it up without mounting down the cooler. It booted up, everything okay. Mounted the cooler back on, which was again a real hassle inside the case. And after that, I took two sticks of RAMs, I booted it up and bling, DRAM light. Amazing! So I I tested other RAM in dual channel mode and other RAM in dual channel mode and so on and so on. It never freaking booted. Then what I did, and I don't understand why, I took uh, one of my ballistics sticks and one of the pinnacle sticks and then it booted up. Then I took out the ballistics RAM, I put the, the, the other pinnacle RAM in and it booted up again in dual channel mode. I don't know why, I don't know what happened there. I, I Honestly, at this point, I don't care. I spent half my night just doing that, so I really don't care, but it worked. At, at some point, it freaking worked. However, the message that I want to spread here is Common practice is to first boot your, your motherboard CPU RAM outside the case. All of my issues could have been solved in like 15 minutes if I would have booted that whole thing outside my case. 
just for a second, just to see if it boots. I, I at this point I would have seen that the RAM do not make an issue. Why ever? It's, it's actually the CPU, not the RAM. Uh, so I don't know why why that light went on, but okay. But I, I would have seen that, I would have done the whole thing, but outside the case, which would not have created a hassle to remove and install the cooler. So I just destroyed a few hours of my life because I did not do a simple two minute step. So for everybody who is going to build a PC in the next couple of months or years, keep that in mind. Just those common practices are common for a reason. And if you are stressed and if you need to work quickly, you tend to forget that they are there for a reason. Anyway, although this was a horrible night, the PC looks freaking awesome. The light wings look awesome in there, also in the front. And by the way, something that I didn't realize, um, you can put that uh, mesh filter back into the front. However, it will only cover like the first two fans. So I figured why put it in if it will not cover the whole front anyway. That that. I don't get that one, but uh, okay. So we did a whole bunch of benchmarks to which we will get in a minute, but first for the temperature test. Uh, for the GPU everything is running at stock, for the 5950X the only two things we've changed in the, in the BIOS settings were enable DOCP, because otherwise you would just cripple your RAM, and uh, PBO, just everything on auto. Uh, Asus has like a bunch of different AI tweaking tools and I don't know what, but uh, we didn't do anything, just enable PBO, that's all. Then in CPU-Z we let the 5950X burn up a bit with all of the fans running at max speed and the 5950X ended up boosting to 4.4 GHz and then it all core and then it gradually decreased to 4.3 GHz and the whole package was burning up around 190 to 193 watts. And this ended up with 76.9 degrees C or 52.1 above ambient, uh, which is surprisingly good, like a 5950X should be thermal throttling at 90 degrees C, like compared to Intel's 115 degrees C or whatever, and 76.9 in this room is significantly better than I expected. I when, when I started up the system, I was still in belief that this would end up like my 12900K, where I could put it in a fridge and it would still uh, cook. However, on here, everything auto, we were at 76.9 or 52.1 above ambient, which is very, very good. It's very, very all right. And if you want to know how it sounds in with all of the light wings, here you have a sound sample. Then we also wanted to see how the system would sound if we say, okay, we wanted to reach 80 degrees C on the whole system, or 54.2 in this case, above ambient. And therefore, we gradually decreased the fan speeds of every fan, and it turned out that those 80 degrees C were perfectly aligned with 70% PVM on everything. Yes, I know the front fans will spin a bit quicker than the ones in the top, and the ones on the cooler will spin at a completely different speed, I know that. However, I just wanted to have like a flat line. So flat line 70% PVM on everything, uh, translated into 80 degrees C or 54.2 above ambient. And at that point the CPU also clocked down a bit and we reached 4.224 GHz, which is still pretty much alright. Uh, and if you want to know how that sounds... So okay, temperature test done with the system that boots. Yay, it was a fantastic experience. But with that out of the way, Let's also now have a look at the benchmarks. So yeah, a freaking powerhouse. Uh, we didn't even bother to test 1080p or 1440p, this is a 3090 Ti, so straight to 4K and then just blaster everything on extreme, because why the hell not? And it worked 
Of course, it was comparable to my 12900K. I just have more RAM. <laughs> That's basically the only difference. And yeah, the 12900K is like the better uh, single core performer, which is important for me for my workflow. But like in a general sense, this is this is freaking brutal. Then it is it is just way too much. So okay, with the benchmarks done, with the temperature tests done, with all of that eye candy stuff done. With the sound test done, we are now ready to take out a bunch of components, replace them with something else in order to create version 2 of this puppy. So this video for today was basically just eye candy for RGB fans out there and to have like a good baseline. And now we will come to the version that I would build. Yeah, let's be honest, I, I can talk around it. We all know where this is going to go. I mean, who am I trying to confuse here? Uh, we will use a bunch of uh, Silent Ring 4s. <laughs> <laughs>